Hey, Canucks fans. Could the Canucks receive more compensatory picks for the Tyler Toffoli trade? I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. And this is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Thursday, April the 17th. Thanks to all of you who joined me on my live stream last night on YouTube. We had a lot of fun. And thanks uh, for the great feedback already to my interview with Al Murdoch that I posted earlier this morning. Um, he, as you can tell, he's a very fun, witty, smart, uh, entertaining guy. So I'm, I'm really glad that you guys in, um, uh, enjoyed that chat as much as I enjoyed chatting with him. Interesting thing I want to talk about, Tyler Toffoli. And I heard this on TSN 1040 this morning. It was Frank Cervelli of TSN on with Halford and Bruff. And they were talking about Frank Cervelli's list of top 25 UFAs, uh, a group headed by Taylor Hall and Alex Petrangelo. But there are two Canucks on there in the top 10. Uh, no surprises here. Jacob Markstrom and Tyler Toffoli. We talked about both before a lot on this channel. But with Tyler Toffoli, what was really interesting is Frank Cervelli said this. Acknowledging that Tyler Toffoli only played 10 games with the Canucks, not his fault, not the Canucks' fault, not the Kings' fault, not anyone's fault because of the, the league being paused for COVID. And imagine, COVID-19, imagine if the season somehow does not resume. Is it fair to the Vancouver Canucks that they only got 10 games out of Tyler Toffoli when they're obviously in line to get at least 23 or 24 games from him because of where the trade deadline was two-thirds through the season? So you expect between 20 and 25 games from any player that you get at the trade deadline and obviously the Canucks weren't going to get that, um, or at least it doesn't look like they're going to get that. Now, Toffoli played very well, obviously, here in those 10 games. He had 10 points in those 10 games, and he looked good. He looked fine, didn't look out of place at all. He adjusted, adapted to the team very well. All these things, and we don't know. We simply can't predict right now whether or not he's going to re-sign with the Vancouver Canucks whenever a new free agent period starts, and, and we simply don't know as much as we want that to happen. But we do know that we gave away a lot to give him. We trade a lot. I've always said this. You have to give up quality to get quality. Tyler Toffoli is quality. So we gave up uh, Tim Schaller, roster player. Tyler Madden, our, our, one of our top prospects, uh, who, who will be a good player, I think, in a few years. Then the 2020, this year's second round draft pick. And then a conditional 2022 fourth round draft pick if the Canucks do re-sign Tyler Toffoli. So... That's four assets. Tim Schaller, Tyler Madden, 2020 draft pick, conditional 2022 draft pick. Now, if you trade all those away and those, pay, those pieces, at least three of them are for sure, right? The fourth one's a conditional. Those, are all, those guys are all with the LA Kings and they earn the right to, to, to have those guys negotiate with Tyler Madden, which they signed them to, so a contract. So all those things. Meanwhile, the Canucks only get 10 games out of Tyler Toffoli. So one would argue, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a Canucks fan, one would argue that's not fair um, because you couldn't predict that this was going to happen. You gave away a lot for simply 10 games. Now, there's another argument. If the, the season went normally and Tyler Toffoli didn't re-sign here, if things were normal, you could argue whether or not that uh, the Canucks should have given up that much for a guy who only played a third of a season here or a quarter of a season here. But that's a different argument, right? This argument's bigger. This argument is because the whole league is shut down. And I'm sure the Tyler Toffoli and the Vancouver Canucks are not the only ones in this position throughout the league. I'm sure there are a few teams that only that signed basically traded for UFAs and expecting to get at least 20 games out of them, not simply 10. So what Frank Cervelli uh, mentioned is that the league could consider giving compensatory picks to, to compensate for the for the COVID-19. And what they would do is add draft picks at the end of a round. Probably not the end of the first round because that seems a little high. Maybe at the end of the second round. I don't know how they would do it. But in essence, you, you can't simply say to LA Kings, no, you got to give one or two picks back to the Vancouver Canucks. That's not going to work. And uh, I don't think anyone would think that would be fair. But you could award the Canucks another pick or another two picks, whether it's at the end of the first round and the second round and then the third round. And it doesn't affect any other team from a standpoint. If you're not taking your picks, it just means that that second round, for instance, is a bit longer. So, for instance, let's say they gave the Canucks a second round pick um, as, as compensation. So, in that second round, if the Canucks were the only team in this situation, would be 32 rounds now instead of 31, right? You get to the end of the second round. So, 31 plus 30 round, 31 is 62. The 63rd pick overall would go to the Vancouver Canucks. So that's an interesting concept to think about. Uh, again, it doesn't hurt the LA Kings. All it does is it expands you know, the length of time, the draft a little bit, but then the Vancouver Canucks are compensated for basically the loss of, um, 
of potential games, 10 or 12 games at least that Tyler Toffoli would have been in, in the lineup. So an interesting concept. Uh, Halford and Bruff seem really surprised by this. Even Frank Cervelli said it's not at the top of the list of priorities or issues to be discussed, but it has been mentioned and it would be on the list somewhere. I'm, I'm sure a lot further down aside from what are the final standings? What do we do about drafts? What do we do about conditional draft picks? Yeah, what's the draft order? All these things. When's free agent? So all these things are much bigger, bigger issues. But it was fascinating to me to hear that the Canucks could be in line for one or two compensatory picks because of the Tyler Toffoli trade. Canucks fans, what do you think of that concept? I, I think we'd like it, obviously. There's no harm for us. We'd get another pick or two. But do you think it's fair? Do you think it makes sense? And um, do you think the NHL should even consider it? And do you think they will? I'd love to know your comments down below. I, I thought it was a very fascinating listen. I was listening to it, taking a shower, getting ready to go to church this morning. So let me know. Should the Canucks be, um, you know, um, in line? Should they be, yeah, in line for another... Com uh, one or two additional picks to compensate for Tyler Toffoli only playing 10 games here. And again, not, it's not because of Tyler Toffoli. It's not because it's Vancouver Canucks. It's because in any team in this situation, um, basically getting their, their time with their, their UFAs basically cut in half the time on the ice. So Canucks fans, let me know what you think. Um, how would it play out? And do you think it's a fair system? Leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the day. Uh, be safe, be healthy, take care of yourselves and of each other. Have a great day. God bless and go Canucks go.